So we're kicking against authority, and obviously we are going against stream with all this. Mm -hmm. And we weren't, we were not bold people. So it, it was very uncharacteristic, which made us suspect it was God. Like, this isn't our idea. Mm -hmm. Who would think of joining the Amish? Like, really? <laughs> no. Uh-uh. You know, it's not like we was like, oh, we want to be Amish. We are almost like, really? Today, it's, uh, it's a privilege to have Elizabeth Benley on the podcast. And Elizabeth, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're the only person I know that was Roman Catholic and ultimately ended up in the Amish. Um, and now you're a Mennonite. Mm -hmm. And that's quite an interesting story. And I'm hoping to catch some pieces of that today and, and maybe some, some lessons pulled out of that process. Uh, so let's just jump right into it. Tell me about your experience as a Catholic, and uh, yeah, what was that? What was that like? Okay, I was born and raised in a typical American middle class society household. Uh, my mom was Catholic, and my dad was an atheist. But in the Catholic Church, if you marry a Catholic, you have to agree to have your children raised Catholic. Hmm. So my parents did that. My dad didn't go to church, but. We went every Sunday. My mom took us, and dad would come sometimes on the big holidays, just because that's what you did. Um, so mass was a weekly thing, and religion classes during the week, mm. um, after, once you're in school age. And that is the one thing that I, I appreciate, um, is that my mom would not have considered herself a devout Catholic. She mm. actually used to make the comment, I hope I'm a better Christian than I am a Catholic. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Although uh, the Catholic Church has days of obligation or saints' days where you have to go mm -hmm. to church, and she usually makes sure we went on those extra days. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, um, she wasn't a devout, um, you know, rosary praying type Catholic. And she would take us to church every, every Sunday. And I always give the ch Catholic Church credit that they read the gospel as part a small part of of one of the four Gospels during Mass. You always mm. get a short bit of that. Um, it is the Catholic translation, but it, it's the Gospel. So I it, there was always enough for the Holy Spirit to, you know, it's like spoon feed me until mm. I was old enough to know where, where the Lord was going to take me with all of that. Mm -hmm. I was a serious child. I... So I paid attention in church. I don't know why. I just really did. Mm -hmm. And so um, that that was just always the way my brain thought. I considered myself a Christian. I went to the youth group at church. Um, people viewed me as a Christian. I did have a very controversial class in my Christian high school, or I'm sorry, Catholic high school, mm -hmm. uh, that was Catholic church history. And he taught the real Catholic Church history. And it was controversial because there were some things in the Catholic Church history that weren't always the best. Mm. I feel like he's, he's put them in, in the proper context. This was before the Reformation. That meant reform. We reformed. We, mm. as a church, got better. I knew the truth, um, for better and for worse, about the Catholic Church. But things just weren't totally clicking. Hmm. And I kind of thought that was just spiritual immaturity. Hmm. I thought, well, when I grow up, I'll understand these things. Everybody around me at church gets this. Why am I not getting it? You know, it must be me. And when I met my husband, David, he was my supervisor in a job. We worked in a group home for disabled children. And when I found out he was Catholic, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's good. But as we got talking, I found out he had the same, like, that feeling of, I don't really totally get it. Hmm. I'm Catholic, but I really don't totally get it. Mm -hmm. So we were on the same track. We weren't necessarily spiritual people, but we were kind of on the same track, mm -hmm. which to us was a green light, you know, to move forward. Mm -hmm. So can you, could you dial in on what were some of those things? Do, do you know specifically or was it just I a do general now. Back sense? then, I, you know, it was uh. a little bit... Um, a little bit unclear. Okay. Um, I didn't understand the doctrines behind the communion liturgy mm. uh, and the way that they do communion. I didn't quite get it. 
Um, and the infant baptism, I never did understand that because intellectually I knew what mm. an adult believer's baptism was. Mm. You know, growing up in America, I knew what that was, and it's like that makes more sense. <laughs> you know, right away, logically, that made sense. Um, mm -hmm. The nuns covered their head when I was younger, and then they stopped in the oh, about mid '60s, but most of them kept kept mm. wearing their veils. Well, I honored those women were my heroes. So holy woman was wearing a covering. Why weren't the rest of us? That bugged me as a child. Uh, when I would hear that scripture, I was like, I don't get it because we're not doing it. I must be spiritually immature. Hmm. And that's usually the answer you kind of get in, in one phrase or another. Mm -hmm. You know, I just kind of conform and go along with all the fishes. And, and that's what we did. You're clearly you're on a journey like you're searching for something you're mm -hmm. you're looking for something more and you're saying that at the time it was more this general sense that you know now in retrospect it's easy to kind of pinpoint down mm -hmm. on some things mm -hmm. and yeah start start walking us through the journey then like you're, you're looking okay. for something mm -hmm. you're you're searching okay. for answers what steps do you start taking in that well I call it holy unrest that's what we had mm. was holy unrest um, there was enough of the Holy Spirit going in us that this just isn't right, mm. but we didn't know what. And we had been married for about six years. And at that point, we had three children. And we felt that as parents of three children, God certainly would have given us some insight into how to raise them doctrinally. Mm. They were getting, our oldest was getting towards school age. How do I teach them a doctrine I don't really believe in? I need to understand this doctrine. Mm. So that unrest led us to the Bible. We both had Bibles, read them on occasion, not a regular thing. Um, David's was a Catholic translation. Mine was a King James. And so we would read them on occasion and talk about it on and off. Then I became ill uh, with a pregnancy where I was stuck on the couch from April until September, and I had three small children. Okay, oh. We're not in an Anabaptist setting. There are no hired girls. There oh. are not extended families. So, I mean, I was on my own uh, with these children in the living room. So I was, you know, reading my Bible. And because, okay, I can make this new daily habit. I've got to mm -hmm. sit all day. I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. So I started reading the Bible. We had also been pretty active in kind of homesteading type things like baking bread, canning, really into canning. Mm. So as we went to get our supplies for canning, we would come up against or come across plain people, uh, Old Order Amish and some other, you know, varieties. Back then it was a predominantly in that area, the Old Order Amish. So we'd see them at the sales and we began to wonder, see more similarities with ourselves and them than with, say, the women at the playground at school or David's coworkers. Like we had more in common with these people. And then somebody at the sale had mentioned that they were Christians. And I thought they were Messianic Jews. So oh, I was like, oh, mm -hmm. oh. You know, they had asked me, I at that point was wearing just kind of a plain sack dress and a headscarf. And someone asked me if I was some type of Amish or Mennonite. And I said, no, I'm a Christian. <laughs> and they're like, well, Amish are Christians. They are. You know, to me, a Christian was the guy throwing tracks out on the subway, wow. you know, and hollering. It's like, no, that's that. Oh, wow. So you know, you, I mean, you just didn't really have no, any yeah. context for this world. Initially. Yeah. And so he's, yeah. and so I said, like New Testament Christians? Yeah, yeah, they're New Testament Christians. To this day, I don't know. <laughs> was that an angel or what? Hmm. So um, as was our habit, we loved the library. This was back in the day when you didn't hmm. have, you know, the internet. So we're going to go look this up at the library. And we happened on a book by John Hostetler called Amish Society. That book went through the whole Anabaptist movement, the Anabaptist history, and then it takes apart the, the Amish culture, or in general, the conservative Anabaptist culture, 
and the reasons why they do things and what scripture is behind it. Mm-hmm. Well, we love this because what I liked about that book is I kept putting it down to read the Bible. Mm-hmm. We checked that book out over and over again because we couldn't get through it. We kept putting it down mm-hmm. to go, oh, oh, yeah, oh, oh, yeah. And we just had one aha moment after the other. And David would come home from work and I would share this. And this just ended up being a constant conversation. Hmm. So this is the journey. And it sounds like there's a lot of pieces. There's a lot of time probably passing, right? Like this didn't happen overnight. Yeah. Right. Um, So then somewhere in this process, you leave the Catholic Church and end up joining the Amish. Mm -hmm. So so tell me about that. Uh, As a timeline, I can tell you that. I remember when I went to the hospital when I first started having my pregnancy complications. Mm -hmm. That would have been in April of 1989. I wore maternity pants. Mm -hmm. When I came home from having that baby in October, to pack sweatpants or something was not like, that's not right. Mm -hmm. So I kind of have that in my head is where my convictions about my appearance really came through. Mm -hmm. That, you know, it was not okay to wear pants anymore, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so that would have been October of 89 that that began. And by the time we had moved into the Amish community would have been 1991. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that just kind of gives you a how, process, how long mm-hmm. the different things took. Obviously, having your fourth child, <laughs> mm-hmm. and, uh, and he was a handful. He had some medical stomach things, um, very distracting. But we were reading, 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 reading. Mm. We were readers. And we came across the budget. <laughs> and okay. so... Um, oh, this is just so interesting. <laughs> 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 what a story. Okay. So that so. we would have probably picked up at the at the sale that we bought oh, our produce okay. at. I was like, mm-hmm. how in the world would yeah. you have got mm-hmm. a hold of the budget otherwise? Okay. Yeah. Mm. And someone had also... Uh, sent us a tract about plain clothing. Hmm. I believe it was called What Shall I Wear? It was by a man named Lester Beachy, um, printed by the Amish Brotherhood Publications. Hmm. And this pamphlet really explained what we were going through with our clothing change because um, we were close to David's parents. Mine, not as much. Hmm. But David's parents were close, and they just did not get this. What are you doing to my grandchildren? Making them wear dresses? Braiding their oh. hair? What? Oh, you know, wow. and we yeah. felt mm-hmm. that this tract really explained that well. Mm-hmm. So I sent him a letter asking, could we get more of these tracts? By this time, we knew the culture a little bit and found, especially man to woman, very standoffish. Mm. So I was just very polite and careful. And he sent back this warm letter that was so obviously a born-again Christian, Mm. greeting me in the name of the Lord. And he was so excited about what the Lord's doing in our life, and he wants to hear more about this. Mm. And I don't know why. I had this connotation the name Lester would be an old man. Um, (laughs) I guess, too, because he wrote in the budget, and he was obviously a good writer. So I just was picturing this wizened old man with this long, gray beard. (laughs) So please come and visit us if you're ever in Sugar Creek, Ohio, which at this point, we were in Geauga County, Ohio. So it wasn't maybe hour, hour and a half away. Mm. So um, we did. <laughs> we <laughs> we wow. literally stopped in on the person, which is so unlike my husband. He was mm. not a bold person. Mm. Um, so when he said he wanted to do this, I'm like, okay, lead on. Mm. Lester wasn't an old man. <laughs> he was younger <laughs> than us. Um, and he ended up being one of the main vehicles mm for us actually into the fellowship. We didn't expect it. We were just asking Mm. questions. Again, this is, this is a, it feels like this is a thread. It's just a searching, you know, Mm -hmm. asking questions. Okay. Well, what about this? And okay. How do we live this Mm -hmm. out? You know, Mm -hmm. what what do we do with these convictions that we're starting to Mm -hmm. to experience uh, and so forth? Yeah. But then that piece by piece by piece, right. Eventually you end up integrating into the Amish. Yeah. Through that yeah. process. That's yeah. that's incredible. Yeah. Well, Lester introduced us to someone that was in his fellowship. Um, Lester was what is called New Order Amish. Mm. So you have your Old Order Amish, which is horse and buggy German speaking. New Order Amish is also buggy, a buggy 
church that mm -hmm. speaks German. They are a little more inclined to use English if somebody English is present at their church, mm -hmm. um, but their differences aren't really so much in lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I mean, the two groups know the difference, but you know, mm -hmm. nobody else would really know. Um, to us, new order sounded like new age. <laughs> we were like, uh oh, big flags. Like, I'm not sure I want to do this. Oh, that's funny. Okay. Um, but uh, Lester had a friend whose name was Steve. And Steve had married a New Order Amish girl. Hmm. And he had come from the Catholic background. He wanted us to meet Steve. Interesting. Okay. So Steve, of course, did all the studying we did. Hmm. Uh, he had become attracted to this young lady who ended up being very close dear friend of mine. Um, he had been attracted and went to her dad. He said, you're not a Christian. No. And he said, well, what does that mean? And he gave Steve, now I'm going off on a bunny trail. He gave mm. Steve a, a New Testament. He said, read this and then come back and see if you understand what being a Christian is. Mm. He stayed up that night and read the whole New Testament. This is the kind of guy Steve is. Steve is now a preacher. Mm. A Mennonite preacher. So <laughs> at any rate, so Steve, uh, in a conversation that we could really relate to, mm -hmm. having come from the world, went through the Anabaptist story, the history, how mm -hmm. the Amish came to be. Um, and we were all, you know, aha moment one after another. Mm -hmm. Our children, in the meantime, are outside playing for the first time on level ground, uh, playing with children who understood like they did, behaved like they did, played like they did. Hmm. Uh, not pulling in TV, not hollering, screaming, not, hmm. they weren't the best kids around. They were the same. Hmm. Um, they weren't those, you know, almost like today we'd say those homeschool children, you know, <laughs> like they're well behaved and they're all orderly and your parents must be too strict. <laughs> you know, that's about how we were treated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he, our children fit in. We felt relaxed. And so Steve and Lester kind of went through the doctrinal things with us, and we were just so agreed. We, we just were having, like I said, one aha moment after mm. another. I believe it was Steve that introduced us to the Martyr's Mirrors, a very thick book full of mm -hmm. stories of the early Anabaptists. That and um, Berceau's book, David Berceau's book, um, Will the Real Heretics Please Stand Up? Yeah. Very convicting. That helped us understand why other Protestant churches weren't quite making mm -hmm. it in our minds. Um, he just articulated it like, oh, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, which pointed us right back to the Anabaptists. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, everything just kept sending us back to Stephen Lester with questions. When we saw the Martyr's Mirrors, we were blown away. Mm -hmm. We were like, those, that whole thick stack, are other Catholics that didn't get it? Hmm. Oh, yeah. D d drill into that a bit. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, when you're just like, even in our churches, it's just assumed you stay in the church that you're born in. Yeah. And so when you grow up Catholic, God, and my husband would even say that, God put us in the Catholic church. We we're born into the Catholic church for a reason. We will serve him mm. this way. Mm. Couldn't argue with that. But then when there's this thick book of other people that were born into the Catholic Church, and as soon as they questioned it, they were martyred or harassed or tormented, mm. and they stood for it, and the Anabaptist faith began out of that, mm. it, was, it was just an eye-opener for us. Like, we thought we were the only ones who didn't get it, mm -hmm. that they were all mm -hmm. moving on, going through the liturgy, and they all understood this. You know, and they maybe they did. Maybe that was they did get spiritual satisfaction out of that, but we were not. Mm -hmm. And we just personalize it like, what's wrong with us? So it was very validating to see, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, in church history that this happened and we're not quite as off as we thought. <laughs> Uh, it was maybe a bit of a reassurance, like, oh, there, there's something here. Very much you know? so. Very much mm -hmm. so. And we, there we were in Holmes County, like, you know, the Mecca of Anabaptists, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and it was like, this is a solid thing. Even mm -hmm. David's parents could see that this was a solid institution. A mm -hmm. lot of their faith was in the church. Mm -hmm. So if the church said it was okay, you know, it was okay. 
So at least the Amish were kind of a institution for them. Yeah, okay. You know, mm -hmm. it that that helped there was a lot of custom, a lot of tradition. It helped them do that mental shift. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it was very reassuring mm -hmm. uh, to us. And at that point, Steve and Lester invited us to attend church. Mm -hmm. We asked them the difference between old order and new order. Because like I said, this new age, you know, <laughs> what is it, this? It still kind of just cracks me <laughs> yeah, up. But, but yeah. it just kind of shows, just to flag it as it goes by, you know. Mm -hmm. Like you guys are coming in with with very little context right I mean, you, yeah. you're on a journey and you're searching and you have a lot of questions and now of course we can look back at that and kind of chuckle and be like oh that's funny that yeah you know you kind of yeah. had that that idea of what new order amish mm -hmm. was and now we all know, oh wait well that's yeah. not what it is but it yeah. kind of just shows like yeah there there was probably an enormous learning curve oh you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's that's part of this whole mm -hmm. story and i you know as yeah. much or as little as you want to get into that mm -hmm. but anyways yeah. to continue on i just want to yeah. grab that as it yeah a and part. there is there's kind of a thought mm -hmm. among seekers which is kind of the name we give to people that look look to join the amish um or get really mm -hmm. intensely curious we call them seekers in general and there's kind of a a trend we tend to be extremists so if yeah. if a seeker is going to obey the Bible, they're obeying every word. Mm -hmm. So they begin to view culturally that the most conservative group must be the holiest. I have heard that. And, yeah, I've heard that. Mm -hmm. And so you go in and you go, okay, what, what's what's a Swartz and Truber Amish? Because everyone will say that those are the most conservative. So I want to check those out, you know. Mm -hmm. And the Swartz and Truber Amish are like, what, what, what? <laughs> do you really want to learn German? What you know, they don't mm. get it at all. Um, but you you go in there with this idea of older is better. Mm. So old order must be better than new order. Swartz and Trumer must be better than old order mm. because they're more conservative. Mm. Um, and you know, it's a myth. Mm. There are Christian Swartz and Trubers, there are Christian Catholics, there are Christian New Order, there are Christian Old Order. Mm -hmm. You know, it's 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 all, you know, they're humans, they're people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so we had to kind of pull away from that that mindset that there was some sort of holiness in in pumping your own water and carrying it. Hmm. I got yeah. You know, and um, that so that probably I could I obviously my story is not anywhere the same as yours, but I can kind of imagine did that happen, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And also, that being a bit of a process to kind of work through as mm -hmm. well, right? And we saw people. We, you know, families would then get referred to us. Oh, we, you know, I began uh, to write like for Family Life and the Pathway mm -hmm. Papers and Keepers at Home. So our name got around, you know. And so families would mm -hmm. show up on our door, sometimes literally knock, knock, knock. Hey, we heard you went from Catholic to Amish. <laughs> yeah, go on in, you know. <laughs> so we saw a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And that was almost universally a situation where they would see hmm. that they would think that, you know, the most conservative meant the most holy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. By that point, we were fully members and living in a healthy Christian environment. And we were like, no, it's got to be that your focus is on the Lord and living for the Lord. Mm -hmm. And if you can do that as a Swartz and Truber Amish, Go for it. If you can do that as a Catholic, go for it. If you can do that as a Mennonite, go for it. Mm -hmm. You know, that was our message to these people. Some didn't like that. I can imagine, <laughs> though, because it's almost like, well, well, yeah, but just give me the, the list of things and then that, that this Fair is the real so. thing. It, it, but what you were just describing, that sounds like a lot more work, a lot longer of a journey, a lot more processing mm -hmm. through, okay, what is God calling me to do? Mm -hmm. You know, um, where should I be? Where do I mm -hmm. fit in? What is this, com what is the community I should be integrating into? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. This, yeah. I, I'm, uh, again, I, I can't really imagine the shift that this must've been mm -hmm. for you all uh, mm -hmm. doing this. So you, you know, go from, it sounds like a fairly nominal uh, environment, mm -hmm. Catholic church, then this whole journey you were just describing, mm -hmm. you integrate into the Amish uh, community, you become mm -hmm. a member there. Um, you're not Amish anymore. No. And as much or as little as you'd like to share about mm -hmm. that part, the next phase of the mm -hmm. story of, okay, what brings us up to today? I mean, it is a longer story. Mm -hmm. um, and anytime 
you're shifting from a church that's hard. It was hard to leave the Catholic Church. Um, mm. I, it was very, we were born, David even had said, we were born here. We're going to, we'll serve mm -hmm. God here. Then all at once he said to me, I mean, I just remember where we were because I was so shocked. And he looked over and said, you know, I don't think we can obey the Bible anymore and stay Catholic. And wow. I was blown away because I had laid down leaving the Catholic Church at that point. It was just like, this is, you know, causing an upset. I'm leaving it alone. And it's almost like as soon as I handed it over to God, David was like, I don't think we can obey the Bible and stay Catholic. Uh, which isn't to say, and I don't want to say that others, mm -hmm. you know, can't. I think that's, a, yeah, that's an important you know, little you know, I, I know, but, I know many Christian Catholics, mm -hmm. okay, but, but where I, he was taking us and the mm -hmm. journey he was pointing us, mm -hmm. David, as the leader of the family, made a shift. I, that's, a, that's a, I think, a really important piece to not miss is like, you had to be honest with what God was telling you and say, this might be really uncomfortable, but we to, to follow our what we think God wants us to do, mm -hmm. what we believe we're supposed mm -hmm. to be doing, we're going to have to make some changes. Right. That's really hard. And the church you know? represents an authority figure. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. like we felt like we were pushing against an authority figure hmm. because you have you are taught in the Catholic tradition, the same as in our, our tradition, to have respect for the church as an institution, more so in the Catholic setting than in ours. The church is, I mean, you go way back in history, it was actually a government. You know, if you broke a church law, you were breaking <laughs> civil law. This is true. Okay, so mm -hmm. that, I mean, it has a pull of authority. Mm. So we're kicking against authority, and obviously we are going against stream with all this. Mm -hmm. And we weren't, we were not bold people. So it, it was very uncharacteristic, which made us suspect it was God. Like, this isn't our idea. Mm. Who would think of joining the Amish? Like, really? <laughs> no. Uh-uh. You know, th it's not like we's like, oh, we want to be Amish. We are almost like, really? Lord? Really? You know? Mm -hmm. uh, but the way he let the dominoes fall and and David's confession at that point of, of wanting to stick with the Bible as his source, mm -hmm. that was huge. And we began to visit the church that Steve and Lester went to. And they went on with, as we showed interest in moving into the community, mm -hmm. they made all of those arrangements. And so, again, we see God's hand looking back. It, it was an ideal setup. Where the Lord put us, who he put us with, Mm -hmm. um, a beautiful couple. Uh, he was the deacon in the New Order Church, and he really discipled us, he and his wife. And our houses were connected. It was a dotty house, so there was just a door between mm -hmm. us. They discipled us. They helped us with, with the doctrine, with our hearts, and the rest of the church did the, this is, we'll find you a horse. We'll teach you to ride a, drive a buggy. We'll show you how to milk a goat. Mm -hmm. We'll show you how to sew a dress. A lot of that stuff, like I said, we we're already kind of homesteaders, so that wasn't too terrible of a shift. But it was just like Emin and Ada just discipled our hearts. Mm -hmm. Lots of popcorn in their kitchen. <laughs> Lots of popcorn. Precious memories. And we mm -hmm. lived there for five years. Mm -hmm. We were baptized in that setting. Um, one thing that I, I did want to mention that, that really touched us, because when you talk about all of the different churches, you go to a place like Holmes County, which is sim similar to Lancaster County, in that there are so many denominate or not denominations, flavors mm. of conservative churches. Uh, you just have the whole spectrum to basically choose from mm. for somebody like us who had the freedom to pick. Mm. When we asked... Lester and Steve, what the difference was between the new order and the old order, their answer was so loving, mm. so Christian, and so kind, it blew us away. Mm. It was a church split. It was hard. Mm. But they did not say, well, the old order, thus, thus, and that, and we wanted thus, thus, and that. Mm. It was so loving that, that we didn't see that in any other church group that we ever visited since mm. just that that real respect and love for where they came from 
it wasn't like, you know, we had had it with the following customs and and that. It, it just wasn't like that, which was very touching. Mm-hmm. And we found that amongst the New Order Amish in general. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I did, I just wanted to throw that in yeah, there. Yeah, that's huge. So the next steps that happened from here, mm-hmm. uh, bring us up to present day. Yeah. Uh, so we moved after five years, um, mostly for logistics, moved to a smaller community in Michigan. Um, financially, you know, we couldn't really buy a farm in Holmes County and we were kind of small town people. So we moved up to Michigan. That's where we raised our ch- Ch- the bulk of our children's that was like 15 mm-hmm. probably about 15 20 years and so we went up to michigan raised our children there and then our family ran into a family crisis but at the same time the church ran into a church crisis mm-hmm. which one fed which we <laughs> may never know mm-hmm. but we were all in crisis and the church became very weak and i became very weak i had some cons- considerable Medical. I was medically fragile, very ill. Mm. I needed a strong church, and that church was basically, well, it basically collapsed. Mm. So I needed to find fellowship elsewhere. And that's where kind of the long journey comes that I ended up coming to Pennsylvania for some healing mm. and then came back and came back. Mm. Every time I came came here, I went to a particular congregation because I had a ride. I was Amish. I had to ride with somebody. (laughs) So this is where my friend Mm. Linda went. So I went with Linda and her Mm. husband to church. That was was my ride. So whenever I was in Pennsylvania, Mm. I went to the Open Door Mennonite Church. And it clicked. God Mm. thing. I mean, I... Like I said, there's dozens of churches even here in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. The way they handled my difficult situation, the way that they nurtured me through that and did not make demands but were definitely there for me was was awesome. Mm -hmm. And so when it got to the point where David was no longer interested in a conservative setting, Mm -hmm. but I was – this, that's where this is where mm-hmm. I landed, and that's mm-hmm. where I, I still am today. It's mm-hmm. an outreach of Open Door, but it's mm-hmm. still the same bishop, still the same people. Mm-hmm. This is just quite the story, it, and and that's the thing with um, as we've had different people on the podcast to tell their stories. It's basically never this perfectly linear straight line. You know, it's like we started <laughs> here, and this was you know we needed blah blah blah, and we went took these steps, and boom, here it is. It's it's always a journey. It. it you know, it sometimes feels kind of meandering or, okay, we try this. No, then we're here. And, mm-hmm. But it's it's part of that process of you, you have questions. You're seeking answers. You're um, trying to do what you feel God is calling you to do, right? And mm-hmm. that's very much the theme that I'm hearing from you. What would you say to someone who who would say they're on the same journey? They're trying to find – where's a church I can plug into? I'm mm-hmm. trying to find a community to, to be a part of, and it's not working where I'm at. You know, I need, I need that. Um, whatever the case may be. I mean, mm-hmm. every situation is different. And, and with that too, before you jump into that, I want to also add, you know, it's not like we're trying to encourage people, Oh, leave your church and go find some, you know, <laughs> For sure. no, of course not. But there are definitely times where people are on a journey mm-hmm. and, and, um, and we want to encourage those people. So what would you say to that? What would you tell those people? It's a really good question. We Mm -hmm. get, with the seekers that come in, almost always they will ask, so do you recommend we do this? Mm. And like, whoa, that's big. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We don't want to be responsible for that. Uh, The one answer that we gave them is only if God told you to. Mm. And we found that in our marriage too. When things got tough, knowing that God ordained this is what got you through. God Mm. said so. It's God. You know, we have to push forward because God is steering this boat. Mm. So concentrate on your relationship with the Lord and let him put you where you're supposed to go. Mm-hmm. That's that's kind of the, the big thing for me. I, I see people in churches that don't have, maybe they have some traditions or customs that are, uh, they really question, but they decide they're going to stay and build that church up stronger and make it better. Mm. And and I admire that, that they can do that. There are other people who was like, you know, I've got I've got some children and some young people, and I don't want to raise them in this context. Mm. 
Hey, if that's what the Lord's putting on your heart, you just got to stick close to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Stay in the word. Surround yourself with healthy Christians that that you feel are on the track. They're what you want to be. Mm. And and just keep at the word and keep asking questions of those people that you respect, that you feel are living the word. Mm-hmm. And let the Lord direct you. That's mm-hmm. That's the only way you can make it because there's going to be bumps, just like in marriage, you know, <laughs> like uh, they do what, mm-hmm. you know, um, and that's when you need the Lord's kind of like, I. it's like I feel like his hand on my shoulder going, no, I told you <laughs> to do this. You know, you're, mm-hmm. you know, in the ditch on a main street with the horse and buggy and you're in Holmes County and you're thinking, really, Lord, mm-hmm. you know. And it's like, no, he said, you're supposed to try this. Mm. And that actually literally did happen to us. Uh-huh. And up behind us comes this old gray-haired Amish guy. And I'm thinking, oh, he's going to want to talk Dutch. We can't talk Dutch. We're going to have to try to explain our name to him. It was the bishop of our congregation. And he came and got us out of the ditch. God mm. provides. Mm. Yeah. that's uh, th- This is quite the story. And I just... I hope from what you've been sharing today that our listeners are hearing this and say, you know, I'm I'm on a journey right now too. Mm-hmm. And I hope this is an encouragement to them to, uh, you know, faithfulness, I think is a thread mm-hmm. that's coming through, perseverance. Yeah. This stuff didn't, mm-hmm. you know, it's not like you woke up one day and boom, had all the answers no. and everything worked. And, no. you know, this, this, you know, it can be years. Mm-hmm. And um, th- there's something encouraging about that. And so as we wrap this this episode up, mm-hmm. bring all the pieces together and, and tie the ribbons on this package. <laughs> Is there any anything you would like to leave with our audience? You know, I think what I said about sticking with the scriptures, you know, that is, that's the big thing. You mm. know, uh, the whole Anabaptist movement was on, you know, solely the scriptures. Let's concentrate on the word of God yeah. and make that our building block. Not society, not culture, not all of the other things that are competing. Mm -hmm. But that became our measuring stick for everything. Mm -hmm. And if you're staying in the word and that is your measuring stick and and the Holy Spirit is working in you, the Lord will direct you. It's not trick questions. He's not trying to trick us. You know, and I think that's why the conservative people who, who think that the most conservative churches would be the holiest is because... You can do that with a checklist. Learn to haul water, check. Learn to butcher chickens, check. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, learn to use a chainsaw, check. You know, mm-hmm. uh, our carnal minds want to do that. It's not that easy. <laughs> yeah, give me the to-do list, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. And I'll just knock that all off and then I'm a, a right good Amishman. Mm-hmm. You know, it's so easy or, or Mennonite or whatever. It's very easy mm-hmm. for us humans to fall into that. Mm-hmm. And our lifestyle lends itself to that. Mm-hmm. There's great things in our lifestyle, but it's the word. Mm-hmm. Base it on the word. And if the word is telling you that you're supposed to serve God in that setting, he'll open the doors. You don't mm-hmm. have to kick against the pricks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's a powerful one to end on and encourage our listeners with that piece. So hopefully through your story that they've learned some things and say, okay, I'm, yeah, I, I have some something to think about, you know, mm-hmm. and um, I just really appreciate you you coming on today and telling your story. Uh, I, don't, I don't take something like that lightly. You know, this is this is a process that you went through and I feel like we, we have a lot to learn from what you went through. So thank you for sharing today. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Thanks for listening to this episode with Elizabeth. So a number of years ago, we interviewed Samantha about her journey from the Catholic Church into the Anabaptist movement, and you can find that linked in the description down below. We also have several other podcasts that you can follow as well, and you can find all of those linked below as well. We're releasing an entire course taught by Frank Reed as its own YouTube and podcast channel, and I think you'll find that material interesting and helpful. And again, all of that is down below and on our website at anabaptistperspectives.com. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you in the next episode.